hey, when in 2006 the J10 was officially declassified and pictures started circulating around the world, well, nobody was really surprised. Western intelligence services had known for about two decades that the Chinese were up to something, and in the end they had a pretty good picture of what the Chinese were up to. Actually, it was what happened between 2007 and 2016 that was unexpected. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology and please stay with me till the end because the stuff that we discuss here is quite difficult to find anywhere else on YouTube. I haven't been saying this for a while. The J-10 is currently one of the staples of the Chinese air power. About 500 units are estimated to be in service right now, more than any other model, even counting all the flanker variants altogether. The translation of the Chinese name is Vigorous Dragon, which actually sounds like a male performance enhancer, so I actually prefer the NATO moniker, which is Firebird. The program started in 1988, the first flight was in 1998, and the aircraft reached the initial operational capability in 2006. The development time hasn't been exceedingly long, to be honest, but there have been many hiccups along the way because this was the first time that the Chinese were trying to design something modern entirely in-house. Some believe still to this day that the aircraft is actually a variant of the aborted Israeli Lavi fighter. But this is quite far from the truth. Yes, it's true the two aircraft share the same general configurations, but one of the purposes of the J-10 program was to develop the know-how to produce a modern four-generation aircraft in China. To do this, the Chinese had to acquire or consolidate some technologies that weren't really developed at the time, so they work with Israel and Russia for this purpose. What actually happened was something pretty common, that is a technology transfer. They didn't just redevelop an already existing project. And by the way, speaking of copying aircraft, happens quite often. Uh, if two aircraft share some similarities, share the same general configuration, some observers tend to reach the conclusion that the younger is a sort of a copy of the older, or at least it has been inspired by the older. First thing, considering the timelines required to develop a combat aircraft, there probably should be at least 5 to 10 years between the two projects uh, for the technologies and the design of the older becoming available to the newer. Coping is really useful if you can really avoid doing a chunk of development. If the shape and size of the aircraft is different, then the aerodynamic design cannot be copied. Moreover, the airfoil is probably the most critical part of the design and it is really, really difficult to copy just looking at pictures. If the overall shape and structure is different, then even the structural design cannot be reused. If the engine is different, then there are structural implications and also a lot of internals need to be redesigned, hydraulics, electrics, air ducts, and so on. If the avionics is different, then you need to redesign antenna housing, the internal layout of the avionic base, uh, the electrics, the connections. If the weapons are different, this is even more redesign, and this is a big one. Either you copy almost everything, or you copy an isolated subsystem, otherwise coping is not worth it. Moreover, the world is full of clever and well-educated people that can find their way through this kind of project with just some help. Some people seem to think that you can find competent people just in a few places around the world, but that's actually not true. There are clever people all around the world, and there's no divine right to technological superiority. J-10 is a single-engine, single-seater Delta Canard. 
This configuration is typical of the contemporary non-stealth projects. We have already discussed this configuration many times on the channel and there are several videos available if you want to dive deep into this subject. For now, it is enough to say that this kind of configuration has a performance sweet spot exactly at the speeds where most of the military and combat operations are conducted today, between 0.7 and 1.2 Mach. The J10 is also an unstable design like all the fighters of its generation. It has close coupled canards like many fighters of its generation, the construction is a mix of aluminum, titanium and composites, like all the fighters of its generation. Well, overall it's a pretty unremarkable design, it's very similar to all the other fighters of the fourth generation which are not designed to be stealth. Put the J-10, the Rafale, the Eurofighter, the Gripen and the Lavi side by side in a picture and you have a family picture. However, there are a couple of speculation that we can do about the aircraft just looking at its general layout. The wing has a variable anhedral angle and also pretty large favoring with the fuselage and the internal part uh, seems to be quite thick. It is a rather unusual choice and it is not entirely clear why this complication was adopted. It may remind some inverted gull configuration of old, but those were justified by ground clearance mostly and the J-10 doesn't seem to have any particular problem in this department. It could be a way of actually controlling the point where the delta wing vortices form on the upper surface of the wing, but we definitely can't be certain. Another curious element is the presence of two canted surfaces below the tail. These are fixed uh, surfaces with a superficial similarity with those mounted on the F-16. Their presence seems to suggest some problems with the lateral stability at high angles of attack. I actually have the impression that the vertical stabilizers is a little bit smaller than the other designs, but again the reason why there was this split in three of the vertical surfaces uh, it's difficult to say. So apart a couple of curious choices, the aircraft is uh, pretty unremarkable or if you want it is as remarkable as the other Euro canards are. Well, judge for yourself. <laughs> what was not conventional and definitely remarkable though was what happened between 2007 and 2016. The initial variant, the J10A, was designed having the European Delta Canards in mind not to copy them, but because it was supposed to have the same performances and the same technology level of those aircraft. So the J10 came with the four panoramic displays in the cockpit, handsome throttle F-6 commands and a panoramic head-up display. It was fitted with a Russian engine and with an air intake with a mobile ramp and even the radar was a mechanically scanned Russian radar. And when it entered service, the pilots loved it, and it was quickly clear that it was not even close to the other European designs. Well, to be honest, the Chinese have been aware of the problem for a few years, because the design of the B variant actually started even before the A variant was being produced. The J-10B received an improved and uprated AL-31 engine, fed by, this time, a DSI intake. Probably the similarity with 
the intakes of the F-35 is one of the biggest sources of the, the Chinese can only copy memes. The SI intakes are nothing new, they have been invented in the mid 50s by an Italian, Antonio Ferri, and they make sense now for combat aircraft applications because speed is no longer as important as it used to be in the 60s or the 70s. The SI intakes have a performance sweet spot at low supersonic speed and they are simpler, lighter, cheaper and a bit more stealthy than conventional air intakes. I have an entire video dedicated to the SI intakes and if you are interested in this subject you can watch it on the channel. But the improvements with the J10B didn't stop there. The entire fire control system was rebuilt around an indigenous PESA radar and a new infrared search and track. One way to recognize a J10B is because the Radum is different from the J10A, which was necessary to house the new antenna, and it also doesn't have the pitot tube at the tip. In this B version, it is clearly visible the tilting of the antenna upwards, which is a feature common to various fixed antenna implementations. In this way, the antenna's radar reflection is pointed away from the emitter, with the effect of reducing the frontal RCS of the aircraft. It is little known, but radar antennas are a very, very good radar reflector for the same reason that they are a very, very good radar emitter. And they are impossible to hide behind, for example, a layer of radar absorbing materials because otherwise, well, they simply wouldn't work. But we're not over yet because on the tail of the aircraft, the sensors, housings and antenna actually proliferated, showing the presence of a relatively complex and probably integrated electronic warfare suite where the J10A just had a radar warning receiver. And finally, a missile approach warning system was installed, making the aircraft more survivable. And ah, I was forgetting all these systems were indigenous systems developed in China, probably with some external assistance, but they have been developed in China. And in fact, since they have been built in house, we know very little about them. It is not clear when the J-10 reached the initial operating capability, but this should have happened around 2010. But this is not the end, because in 2016 or 2017, the J-10C, a new variant, actually reached its initial operational capability. So the J-10C is the current 2022 production version and it is becoming mainstream. It features an indigenous WS-10 engine, an indigenous AISA radar, and an indigenous helmet-mounted sight. And the new antennas have been spotted and the old ones have been rearranged, uh, hinting to some improvements in the electronic warfare area too. So in 10 years, the J-10 went from being a pretty ordinary four generation aircraft to becoming a modern four uh, plus plus generation combat aircraft, uh, ticking pretty much all the boxes, the development underwent by the platform is definitely remarkable and I don't think I can find any other example of so much being developed in so little time. Now, I know that you're waiting for some juicy details about the specifications, the systems, the weaponry, and we are going to dive deep into these subjects for what is possible to know in the next video. While you wait, there are several videos about China and Chinese Air Force on this channel and they're going to appear beside me. So, thank you very much for watching and see you there.